Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, August 13th. It is Carter Hall Day, the birthday of Carter Hall. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Beautiful day here in southeastern Pennsylvania and very happy to have a chance to sit down and enjoy a once again corn cob. Sorry to do it two weeks in a row, but Carter Hall and corn cob just go together and uh, enjoy some Carter Hall, which I haven't had in quite quite some time. Uh, before I get into that, uh, actually let me just get this lit up and give you a taste of what this video is going to be about because it's going to be an interesting one, I think. Uh, first off, an announcement. Uh, as of this video, well, actually as of my live stream, I believe the video last weekend, I'm not sure about that one. Yeah, I started actually last weekend. So, as of now, uh, you will not see advertising on this channel unless YouTube puts it on there with, without my knowledge. Uh, I am voluntarily demonetizing myself. And I'd like to spend some time talking about why I'm doing that and why I think it's important and something that I think we all need to think about. Um, sort of a bigger picture issue. But before I get to that, I just wanted to recognize that it is the 67th birthday of Carter Hall. It's very rare that we know the birthday of a tobacco. Uh, as many of you know, Carter Hall was a go-to smoke for me for many, many years. Um, in recent years, I've just sort of stopped smoking it, not for any good reason. Um, just haven't had the hankering for it as much as I used to. Still have plenty of it around, uh, still have the occasional bowl. This is actually a bowl of uh, original Carter Hall, you know, the, the old stuff that was made in the U.S. Uh, it's now made in the Dominican Republic. I've had that too. It's excellent. It's different. Uh, it, it, to me, it's a cleaner tobacco flavor in the new stuff, and I frankly prefer the new stuff. But at any rate, happy birthday to my dear friend Carter Hall and many, many happy returns. I will link to the video in the in the description where I talk about the history of Carter Hall. Um, it's, it's a fun watch. If for nothing else, you get to see me several years back and you'll be asking, is that really him? Because uh, I've changed a wee bit since then. So, the, the heart of the matter here. I've been thinking for, oh, well over a year now, as I've, as I've been doing more and more woodworking down here in the shop to, as woodworking maybe is a little bit too highfalutin a term for it. I'm just trying to make some shop furniture, trying to get organized, that kind of stuff. But it's got me back into it. And I've, you know, as with most things, I turn to YouTube to see, you know, what are people doing? You know, what methods are there to do this particular thing? Gee, I haven't cut a dovetail in 10 years. Let me watch a few people cut some dovetails and stuff like that. And uh, I, it wasn't a pleasant experience. You know, it hasn't been. And I don't mean to pick on woodworking. It's probably true of a lot of things. But there are YouTube presenters, content creators as they call them, making the most inane and misleading videos that you can imagine in the world of woodworking and probably other worlds. And they are getting, they're getting playtime. This is what comes up. If you search for dovetails, these are the videos you see. And if you really dig in and you really, you know, try different search terms and ignore the first 20, 30, 40 videos that come up, you will find a video of some guy in his garage saying, you know, I've been cutting dovetails for a while. I'm going to show you how I do it. Maybe there's better ways, but this is what works for me. The best thing to do is practice. That's the best advice you can get. No, instead you're getting, I'm going to show you the only way to cut dovetails, and you're going to need to buy this saw because this saw is the only one that can do it, 
and uh, don't forget you have to have these chisels and yes these chisels cost more than the other chisels but they're better than the ones that you already have and you just can't cut dovetails without them yet. and of course there's affiliate links for everything it's all about money and so you, you say okay well that's that's crap you know I'm not gonna watch that but yet that's what shows up that's what with right at the top of the list when I search why is that and I've been kind of researching this kind of and, and it's sort of just sort of fallen into my lap as well through some of the other stuff I watch and it's interesting multiple uh, sorts of things that I that I watch that are not really all that related or seem to be coalescing around this idea so maybe there's maybe there's a movement afoot but I was watching uh, our friend uh, Scott Markwood, uh, he has a video called uh, My Growth Rings. I think it's something like that. It's a woodworking channel. Uh, I will put a link below. Scott, of course, was Aristocob, uh, still is Aristocob, uh, but his Aristocob company is at least not currently active. Um, but Scott's a wonderful guy. Uh, really enjoy him. He's got a wonderful kind manner about him excellent presenter and uh, he he's got this woodworking channel that's heavily focused on the shopsmith tools which is what he's fond of and you know I'm, I'm not a fan of them but I, I see value in them I see how they would be really useful for some people so he was interviewing someone else and I'm not going to get into too much about this because I, I just simply don't remember uh, who this person was it's somebody that I wasn't familiar with another YouTube woodworker and they were talking about uh, another channel that had basically done a hit piece on the shopsmith saying it was a very dangerous tool so if you want to look it up go go find Scott's channel I'll link below to Scott's channel and you can watch it but they got into this whole thing about how does YouTube decide what video you see and it's all about advertising it's all about um, the analytics to some extent the, the you know your history your your watch history but you know things that you don't really think are necessarily going to play into what videos you're shown play into them and of course YouTube makes money through advertising so the videos that people watch and, and will put up with ads for are going to get more playtime than videos where there aren't many ads even if they're on the same topic, even if they're giving the exact same amount of information, even if one is giving more information than the other. So it's not like, um, well, Google isn't like Google anymore either, but imagine a real search engine that would just find you the most relevant terms and not worry about ads and stuff. It's not like that. Um, and maybe nothing in life is like that, but that's the situation we have. So what does that have to do with us well yeah as I said there's there's these people in the woodworking world that are just really dumbing down woodworking for everyone they're they're creating more problems than they're solving and recently jumping back here to the pipe smoking world I've noticed some odd things and It's a little hard for me to talk about some of these things because they are just my own perception and maybe I'm completely misguided here but I don't have a lot of time over the past year I just haven't had time to keep up with new YouTube presenters and a lot of you folks are doing that and I'm, I'm grateful that you're doing it because as I've said many times I think the most important thing we can do is to keep this community alive and growing and one of the ways to do that is to recognize new people and promote them but I've seen four, maybe five YouTube channels that I, you know, people I've never heard of. Like, not not only haven't I seen their videos, but I've never even heard them mentioned by other channels, or, or you know, or, or in like live stream comments or anything. These are just like random. Oh, there's somebody new, and then I look, and they've got twenty thousand subscribers. Do you have any idea how impossible that is? 20,000 and then I see people that have 50,000 60,000 70,000 folks there aren't that many pipe smokers on YouTube I promise you 
there's something wrong here. And I know what's wrong, but there's something wrong. And they're all monetized. And they're, they're mad because they're not getting enough money. Because YouTube doesn't want to play ads. Well, YouTube wants to play ads. But YouTube's got an ad for, I don't know, McDonald's, just to make something up. And McDonald's has certain rules about where it wants its ads to be run. You know, so it probably would say, like, uh, you know, maybe don't run those on vegan channels. I don't know, maybe they would. That would be kind of funny, actually. Um, you know, maybe they don't want to be associated with, oh, this would make sense, drug drug abuse. You know, we don't want McDonald's brand associated with drugs of abuse. That, great, yeah. Or maybe they don't want to be associated with tobacco. And YouTube sometimes makes the call on that. The, con the advertiser sometimes makes the call on that. At any rate, when I was running ads, I would very often get told this video is restricted. There's uh, limited ads that are going to be run on it. Oddly, it didn't seem to really change the number of ads. It just changed the amount of money that YouTube was giving me for running the ads. Fine. It's their platform. I'm happy they let me do what I do. And I was making... I, I actually put up on Instagram and I didn't prepare a, an image here, but I, it was my last week's uh, revenue. And I think it was something like $2 and 30 cents I made that week. And my total for the m previous month was $12 and something. And it's very rare that I break $10. So I was happy about that. That was a great month. Keep in mind, YouTube doesn't pay me until I reach a hundred dollars. So at the rate of ten dollars or so a month, it's I'm getting paid if I'm lucky twice a year, and usually just once a year, and that's a hundred dollars. I thought of it as it buys a tin of tobacco every month or so. It uh, you know helps me buy SD cards or whatever I need for the shop, but it's not worth it anymore. And I'll tell you why it's not worth it. As I'm seeing these channels and these people getting angry about not getting enough money off of YouTube for making pipe smoking videos, now they're starting to play games with, uh, well, we're going to, you know, the channel's going to be private. You're going to have to pay to see it, or we're going to have, you know, Patreon, and there'll be special content behind a Patreon paywall, uh, or, or just, you know, send me money. You know, the, the, the tip jar is now extended to the comment section somehow. And the tip jar is a funny one because many people have kindly given me tips during live streams. And I'm very grateful for that. I really am. And I don't in any way mean to say that that's a bad thing. And I think anybody should be perfectly happy to do it. But it shouldn't be the reason you're part of this community. It shouldn't be the reason you're making a video about smoking a pipe. The reason I do what I do has always been I just want to talk to people about pipes. I want to share what I know about them. I want to share what I know about pipe restoration. I want to share what I know about tobacco. And I want to learn. I want to learn what you guys know. I want to um, learn new things. I want to learn where I'm wrong and correct myself or maybe find better ways to do things. And I want to make friends. And man, have I made friends. I, I, I can't believe how many friends I've made through this goofy little sitting in my basement chatting once in a while. And I realize that's the exact opposite of what these people are doing. These people are generating a fan base. Not friends, but a fan base. And getting money out of them. Well, I'm not getting enough money out of you this way, so I'm going to have to get money out of you another way. You know, you got to pay for for this because, you know, this isn't free. This is, well, I get a lot out of it. And I realized that that approach is, is actually dividing us. You know, that approach is saying, I'm the creator, you're the fan. That's not building a community. That's building a network or something. I don't know what it is. It's, it's, it's building a, it's building a pipe personality. It's building a, an influencer, as the kids say. It's not building a community and 
that's what I want. That's that's what I've always wanted is to, is to build a community, and we we have and we continue to. So realizing the harm that this is doing, realizing realizing the, the the fact that buying into this, even in the form of just just simple simply allowing the ads to run, is hurting that community building effort. Why do I say that? Because I watch videos and the ads come on and I want to just go oh, watch something else. I don't want to sit through the ad. I, I, I'm just being honest with you. As somebody that's had ads on, I do not want to sit through them. And I will click the skip button as quickly as possible. And if I can't skip them and I'm not really engaged in that video, I'm going to go watch something else. So that doesn't help build a community. If everybody I'm, we're, we're watching is annoying us in the middle of their video with an ad, no, I, I got rid of them. I apologize to you for ever having them, frankly. Um, like I said, it was it was fun while it lasted. It bought a few tins of tobacco, uh, but it's never never a good thing when you start following money instead of your passions and. Uh, yeah, I think that's. I think we're being led astray by that. YouTube isn't doing this to us. We're doing this to us. You, none of us started doing this with the idea of making money. If you did, stop watching. Go, go, go watch something else. Because <laughs> I know, I know, none of us did that. And it was just never the point. So. Don't make it the point. And if you see somebody trying to make it the point, maybe let them go off and do what they're going to do and you stick with what has served you well and what has helped you and has made you feel welcome and made you feel like a part of a community rather than a member of an audience. So I've said my piece. And one last thing, Godspeed to them. You know, I hope these folks have a fantastic career and become YouTube millionaires because they somehow convinced 70,000 non-existent subscribers to buy their videos. I don't know. The economics don't make sense. So, Carnival is great. Uh, I am going... On Wednesday, today's Sunday, on Wednesday, I am driving out to Central PA where I will spend two days fishing. Uh, well, hopefully Wednesday night if I get there early enough. All day Thursday, maybe Friday morning. And then I will drive to uh, the Columbus Pipe Show. So I really hope I get to see uh, some of you there. Uh, I stopped at Cigar International today because I was up at Cabela's getting new waiting boots. And one of the things I picked up was this tin of Cornell and Dale Cajun cake. Really nice stuff. I was quite impressed with it. I had a couple bowls today. Um, I'm going to take that to the show. If you want to try it and you see me, say, hey, give me some of that Cajun cake. And God, I hope I remember to take it now. <laughs> but no, if you're at the show and you see me, please come up and, and say hello. I, I love meeting folks. Uh, and as I've said before, I'm not, I'm not the guy that's going to run around saying hello to people because I'm just a shy, introverted guy. So pull me out of my shell, guys. I'll enjoy it. With that, I am going to let you all get off to your Sunday, and I'm going to do all the stuff that I normally have to do here. Nothing too exciting. So, hope you enjoyed that. Hope you understood the point behind it. And enjoy the ad-free videos from now on. <laughs> Scout's honor. <laughs> Take care, folks. Well, until, we, uh, until we speak again, I will look forward to talking all again very soon. Goodbye now.